And now, here's Happy Caldwell. Hello and welcome to our broadcast. Faith versus fear is our topic today. I taught this at the Agape Church Spring Celebration several years ago. What did the Lord mean when He said, men's hearts are failing them for fear? He wasn't talking about a physical heart attack, but instead He was talking about the spirit of man failing to produce faith. Out of the heart, your spirit proceed the issues of life. Are you allowing fear to steal your faith? Then be sure and stay tuned for today's program. But before we get into the Word, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song, and a powerful song it is if you need healing or deliverance while she sings. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you as she sings the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach the gospel to Thank you, Father. 
because of the anointing. beautiful voice is unforgettable. Her inspirational songs are timeless. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer, to the anointing. It's the anointing that really makes a difference. Every song makes you feel in his presence. Stand your ground against the devil. Stand your ground in the Lord. Best Don't loved be hits, Lord. hidden classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom. CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Jeannie Caldwell are sold. And now, here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 21. And I want to share this morning with you in our celebration and we always enjoy this time of the year. We used to call it camp meeting and then conference. And now we, it's a celebration for those of you that are visiting or may not have been involved, meet new members of the church. and a Celebration, our annual anniversary, annual celebration. The church began May 20th, 1979 in a Target shopping center down on Barrow Road. We were there for a couple of years, then moved out of here and bought this property and built the building. And the Lord said, I don't want you to borrow the money. He said, I want you to build it and pay for it as you go. Well, we'd never done anything like that, but we knew that's what God wanted. Because he said, if you can't build a building by faith, you can't take a city. Now, he didn't say a thing about television in the beginning. Because if he'd said something about television, I'd have probably gone back to the liquor business. <laughs> but he said, you can't take a city if you can't build a building. Everything's relevant. And he said, the congregation is going to have to build this building by faith and pay for it as you go. So we bought the land. We didn't have the money to pay for it. But the people that sold it to us didn't want to sell it to us in the first place. And we offered them 18,000 an acre, I think, because the property across the street is sold for 20. We figured this was rougher and take a lot more work, so we offered them 18. They said, no, thank you. Okay, Lord, what do you want us to do? You want us on this hill? That's what he said. I came up that side street over there. There was no neighborhood here. It was just all woods. The retirement center across the street was the only thing that was here, and it was just two-lane blacktop. 
And he said, I want you on this hill. I didn't know, but it was because of the TV tower out here. It's the second highest hill in the city, the microwave tower. And I said, well, what do I do now, Lord? The people said uh, that they didn't want to sell it. He said, wait 30 days and go back and offer them 16000 an acre. Now, that doesn't make sense. I mean, we offered them 18, they turned it down. He said, go offer them 16. So a month later, we went back and offered them 16, and they said, okay. <laughs> and they said, and we don't want all the money now. I said, well, that's wonderful because we don't have any. <laughs> and that was the time in 1980, 81, 82. If you'll remember, interest was 18%. You wanted to borrow money to build anything, it was 18%. And the people that owned the land, it was a group of businessmen, they said, and, and we'll only charge you 10% interest. And you can build the buildings that you want on, get your attorneys to work it out so there won't be any you know, seizure of buildings or uh, uh, structures, and you can pay us off whenever you can. And we paid them off in two or three years, I think. And then started building the building and built it by faith. We laid the foundation. Every Sunday we'd take a building offering in addition to regular tithes and offerings. Then Monday morning, <clears throat> all the subcontractors would come up to Jeannie's office and want to be paid. And she would say, did this week you get this much? Come back next week and we'll give you some more. <laughs> I don't think you could build a building like that today, but that's the way we built it. And they were thankful to get what they could. So they'd come back next week and we'd give them another check. And sometimes, she, like the guy that did the air conditioning, those units back there are big, huge Canadian uh, heat units that were built in Canada for a big company and they turned them down. So we got them for a, a half price. But it was still going to cost about $70,000. She told the guys, she said, we will pay you your money in, I don't know how much, she said four weeks, six weeks, something like that. I said, why did you tell him that? We don't have the money to pay him. She said, we'll pay him. And we did. So the money came in, and people stood with us, and we asked everybody in the church at that time to believe God for $1,000. People believe God. I think the premier testimony was a little lady one Sunday. Now, we were in this building, still building on it. There was no carpet. There was no pews. There was no ceiling. The walls were sheetrock dust. She comes walking down this aisle right here, dragging a pillowcase full of what we later found out was pennies and nickels and dimes. There was over $600 in that pillow. She couldn't lift it, so she drug it. And she said, I have a testimony for the congregation. I said, okay. She came up here, and she said, I went home and asked the Lord how I was going to give my $1,000. I don't have $1,000. He said, you've been taking the change out of your husband's pants pocket <laughs> for a lot of years. Go get all that change and take it to the church. $600? And I don't know whether her husband knew she was taking it, but she brought it. And she said, the Lord told me this. And I'm sure glad she did this. She said, I'd like three people to come down here to represent the three people groups in the church. I'd like somebody to come over here and stand. Now remember, she's saying this, not me. I'm standing up here watching. She said, you could give um, $1,000 without ever missing it. So a guy came down and stood right here. She said, I want somebody else that come down here and say that, you know, uh, you don't have $1,000, but you'll do your best to, to believe for it, et cetera. And there was somebody else who came down here, uh, middle income, moderate income. So they came down and stood here. She said, now I want a third person to come up here to represent the people that are what will be considered poverty level. Well, that took guts for somebody to come up here and stand, but somebody did. They came right up here and stood right here. And she said, now, congregation, here's what the Lord told me. 
this person representing the poverty group and this person representing the moderate income group have wanted this person to build your church for you. She said, and they're not going to do it. <laughs> You're all going to have to believe God for a thousand dollars. And they did, and we built it and paid for it. Then we built the educational building, then the Family Life Center, and then, and then God spoke to us about television. And, and we have three full power commercial television stations that cover Arkansas, Boot Hill, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, and Tunica, Mississippi, reaching into over a million, uh, about a million, two, three hundred thousand households and reaching out to our city, state, nation, and world, 51 churches worldwide, 13 Bible schools. And God has done what he said he would do. He said he would build a spiritual production center where you would produce life, city, state, nation, and world. So God said in the beginning, and Jimmy, you might be interested in this, when the Lord told us to do what we're doing now, he said, I just want you to know you are not the first person, first minister that I called to do this. I said, well, if you don't mind me asking, what, what number am I? He said, you're number seven. I said, seven? You mean you asked six other people to do what this church is doing before us? He said, yeah. I said, well, what happened to them? Why didn't they do it? And he very lovingly showed me where each one of them got off. They missed it doctrinally. They missed it morally. They missed it in other areas. And he said this to me. He said, and if you don't get it done, I'll get somebody else. Now, that's pretty humbling. I mean, you weren't his first choice. <laughs> and if you don't do it, he'll get somebody else. God's going to get his job done. And the people have have come into this church and congregation and stayed with us. And some of them are still here. Uh, Betty Killow's been here since the beginning. And people have been here all 30 plus years and continued to produce life. And then people have gone out and started other works and ministries just like Alan has gone down to Texas and started a church. And there are churches and ministries and missions and all over the world because that's what God said he wanted us to do. In the early days of Christian television in this city, now we have an abundance of Christian television. Satellite, cable, of course we have local, we're the, we're the only homegrown, Arkansas-owned and operated Christian television network. But in the beginning, there was no Christian television here. We brought the first Christian pilot television back from PTL years ago and CBN 700 Club. Took it down to the local TV stations and asked them to run it. They put it on at 3 o'clock in the morning. We didn't know that television would be a part of our assignment, but it soon became uh, that. And uh, when, the, when the Lord called us to... to to do this, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. And before we had our own Christian stations and network, um, we reached out to the community to provide spiritual um, impartation. And that meant we went to the local stations, and at that time they had, every morning they would have devotions on television. Like at 6 o'clock, you could turn it on and they'd have a morning devotion. And so we asked them if we could program that. The cable company came in. I worked with uh, Dwight Linkus, who was one of the uh, city board of directors, to bring cable into uh, Little Rock so we could have Christian television. And so we asked them if we could program that devotion. They said yes. So we went back in our little guest room, our green room that was our TV studio then, and we brought in local pastors to do the morning devotion. And it was just like 60 seconds. So they go back there and each one from different denominations. And I remember this one particular morning we were taping with the pastors. And we were building and had, had built 
most of it. I mean, it wasn't totally functional, but. And so we walked out of this guest room over here. And they were standing right here. I don't think we had the balcony in yet. We did the balcony later. But we were standing here, and these, these pastors from different denominations were talking to each other. I was standing over here, and they were standing here, and they were looking and said, man, this is beautiful. He said, uh, they asked me, he said, now, uh, how did you build this? And I said, well, and I told them what I just told you. I said, we built it by faith, believe in God. And he looked at the other pastor, and he said, how come we can't build something like this? And the other pastor looked back and said, because we have no faith. <laughs> I, I was kind of embarrassed at the time. You know, the Bible says that faith is a lifestyle. It's not a man, a message, a suit of clothes, a house, a car. It's a lifestyle. It's the way you live. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, you can't please God. That's our spiritual DNA, is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. Faith is the substance of things. What things? Go over to 2 Peter chapter 1. We'll get to Luke in just a minute. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So faith is the substance of what things? All things that pertain to life and godliness. And all things that pertain to life and godliness is everything. Then look at verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises we might be partakers of the divine nature. Now, this scares religious people. Well, you know, God is divine. Yeah, He is. But we have His nature on the inside of us. When we're born again, we receive of His Spirit. And we are imparted to that impartation of His divine nature. And God's nature, of course, is love. And faith works by love, but God's nature is also, he's a God of faith. Now look at Luke 21, and we'll get to what I really wanted to share with you this morning. Luke chapter 21, but I wanted to just give you those remarks about faith, a little of our history, because this is why we have celebration every year. Luke 21, verse 25 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So we know he's not talking about the rapture here. We know he's talking about the second coming of Christ. The rapture of the church takes place before the second coming. Now that's if you believe in a pre-tree of rapture. Stay tuned next week for the continuation of this message. You know, the word salvation comes from the Greek word sozo. Salvation. To be saved means to be safe, to be preserved. But to be saved, to be safe, or to be preserved, you must be born again. Now, we use the words interchangeably, but they have a little different meaning. To be born again means to be born of God, to be regenerated in your spirit, a new species of being that never existed before. 
That's what happens when you pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart. You're born again and you are saved, safe, preserved. If you've never done that, would you pray with me right now? Right where you are, home, hospital, hotel, just close your eyes and pray this prayer. Just say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. And I believe God raised you from the dead. And I'm asking you to come into my heart and to save me now. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a new nature. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it in your heart, said it with your mouth, Jesus came in. Now, I have a little book I'd like to send you. It's free of charge. It'll help you get started in your life with God. The book is called God Loves You. Just log on to the website, vtntv.com, and you can download the book there for free, or you can call the number on the screen, 1-800-264-2525. Tell the operator you just prayed with Pastor Caldwell, and you would like that book, and we'll send it to you. You know, we're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report that you want to share with me, just email it to me, happycaldwell at vtntv.com. You can also call the 1-800 number, 1-800-264-2525, and send in your prayer request. Now, stay tuned because I want you to get your copy of this product offer on Great Grace. God's grace is not a license to just do anything you want and God will forgive you. His grace is so much more than a get-out-of-jail-free card. In fact, it's God's highest manifestation of His love. The early church was a great witness of the grace of God. He showed His grace through no want or poverty among them. But there are other types of grace with God. His sufficient grace will get you through your weaknesses. His abundant grace empowers you to reign in life with more than enough. For just $20, you can get your copy of this series by Happy Caldwell, Great Grace. Order this four CD set by calling 1-800-264-2525 and ask for offer number 33060. Be sure to join Jeannie and me next week at this same time. We'll look for you. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. You can watch today's show online. Simply log on to vtntv.com and click Happy Caldwell. If you'd like to order today's broadcast on DVD, you may call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. To contact this ministry, you may write to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call us at 501 223 2525. And be sure to visit us online at vtntv.com.